Good morning, good start of the day, dear uh, participants, dear audience, <coughs> welcome back. For anyone who is joining us new, we are here at the Inclusion and Diversity Forum 2021. This morning, we have had an exciting opening of our three-day event. And we have heard several times that one of the very important things about today in the Inclusion and Diversity Forum will be to look at and celebrate the past achievements. So, I am very happy that I am joined here by Tony Geudens, who is the project officer from Salto Inclusion and Diversity. And uh, Tony has been a person that, when it comes to inclusion and diversity, is a name that resonates within the youth field sector in the wider Europe. So I'm very happy to um, be able to stand with you here on stage. And uh, without much uh, further introduction, I would say, Tony, please take us on the road to inclusion and diversity. Tell us, how did we get to where we are today? What was this road of past achievements? What did it take for us to come as far as we did? So, the stage Thank is you. yours. <clears throat> yes, of course, when we're talking about past achievements, they look back at who could uh, tell about that and then they find a dinosaur. So indeed, I have the pleasure and the privilege uh, to be working for Salto Inclusion already, I think, 21 years. Uh, so I'll take you on a trip down memory lane. But when it's about uh, celebrating achievements, of course, it goes uh, together with uh, all kind of uh, cheers and applause, etc. So I won't only give you images and numbers, but I also want to have cheers. So um, uh, here in the audience, you can clap and uh, cheer and whatever at home or online, you can uh, use the thumbs up and the, the different emoticons that you have on your um, uh, social media or on the uh, Zoom. So let's try. So when there's a great thing that has happened, this will appear on the screen and you cheer. Woo! That was great, but it could be greater. Let's try again. Yay! Good. So we're ready to start. 20 years ago, Salto Inclusion and Diversity, or Salto in those days, it was not Inclusion and Diversity yet, just started as a training center. I was only employed half, and then what did we do? Two training courses a year. How things have changed. Look at me standing here on the stage. Yeah? So those things were not part of the job description in those days. So hopefully, over those 20 years, you got lots of nice treats, and hopefully you're, hopefully you're not as dumb anymore as when we started. Over those seven years, I asked Maria to look into the statistics, or so my colleague Maria, and we had no less than 63 activities and 1,546 participants. <laughs> you! Great! So that also means 63 emotional goodbye parties. That's also 1,546 seats of more inclusion and diversity in our European programs. So that's a great thing. And the type of activities we did goes from really short mobility tasters, just giving inclusion organizations like you. Yeah, there's some trainers from this uh, course in the, in the audience. Um, so to have a, a small taster of what does it mean to go international with your groups of young people with fewer opportunities. But also we don't forget the national agencies. We have colleague support groups for them so that they also get together and see how can we make inclusion and diversity happen just to give you a few examples. This is what it really looks like. This was last week in Denmark, and it felt so good to see real people again, to find this vibe uh, that people, together with a beer or a coffee, they make this new world or these new possibilities for their young people. So um, I hope also we can recreate some of that uh, here, despite all the masks, etc. Anyway, not everybody has time to come to training courses. So what did we do? Okay, we, let's turn those training courses into 
paper training courses, into publications, yeah? Also PDF, so digital, but anyway, yeah? With or without, without appendix, doesn't really matter. We like to keep them practical and to the point. So, some of these publications are more general, some more specifically on uh, target groups, but in total we had more than 20 inclusion and diversity publications. Now that's an achievement. <laughs> voilà. You can still find them online there, um, and these are just a, a few um, working with different target groups, like you have no barriers, no borders, about disability, or over the rainbow, guess, LGBTQ, uh, youth and the city, urban youth. So we, we address really different uh, topics uh, during uh, the years. But that's not all. We also had a try at research. Not academic research, so not statistics and all those things, but we brought clever people like you, together in round tables or consultations, and we asked what works and what doesn't work. Whether it's on employability, whether it's on uh, working in uh, disadvantaged urban areas, or whether it's on track, uh, working with needs. Yeah? So, what are the do's and don'ts? And the nice thing is that you don't have to, say, have to make the same mistakes anymore. Yay! <laughs> That is great. No. Okay, as you can see on the cartoon, not everybody is good at English. No. We all have those tattoos in Tibetan and in uh, Chinese, etc. So I suppose they have them in English with some deep meaning. Because people don't always speak English very well or it's an obstacle to get into our programs, what do we do? We do training courses in um, other languages, so the national agencies here, they all have a super uh, offer in the local languages that you work in, uh, but also we translated our uh, publications. So, yeah, you can cheer also if there's no star, that's uh, poss possible. Uh. So I let you uh, guess a little bit what are the languages there. But it's not our work, it's also, again, different NGOs and national agencies in the field that made it happen. And as far as we could count, we managed to track down that there's at least 25,000 paper copies of these publications uh, printed and downloaded uh, a quarter of a million downloads, I think. Woohoo! <laughs> voilà. So just as a little contribution, again, those seeds to the field, and hopefully they make inclusion and diversity grow. And then the new youth programs came in 2014. New terminology, new actions, everything that was in our publications, yeah, basically you <laughs> throw away. Change is hard, so try to bend the coin. But what did we do? We just got inspiration from rock bands. If they do a best of, we can do that as well. So we published the inclusion A to Z, which actually take all the little elements of the other publications to really keep it up to date. Or what do the IT people do? Well, they just create a new version. So we also did uh, that with uh, Use Your Hands to Move Ahead with the Solidarity Core that uh, kicked in. So a, a new program all of a sudden, new names, terminology. So we created our publication we had already, and we upgraded it to the new uh, Solidarity uh, Core. Now that's an achievement. <laughs> Voila. Good. It's nice to have those very practical things, but we also need to look at the bigger picture. So it's not about only doing one-off activities. What we try to do is also to create a more strategic approach, thinking more in the long term. As you see those three fish, they are definitely looking at how they can uh, have a better strategy to deal with the little cats. Yeah? So in the face of change, you need to be strategic to deal with all those cha challenges. Now, how this, did this happen in our field, in the uh, European youth work field, let's say? We created already in 2015, or, or the national agencies created in 2015, the Strategic Partnership for Inclusion. 18 NAs, they got together, and some of them are here, so it's a pleasure to welcome you. And they, try, uh, they uh, decided, okay, what are our priority target groups in our country? Yeah. So you see them there, there's three of them, working on need, uh, young people not in education, employment and training, working on disability and health issues, and uh, working on rural youth. 
Now, what did they do? They first did a little mapping in their countries. So, who are actually the organizations, NGOs like yours, but maybe also other institutions that are working with this target group? The next thing is they provided a national activities to get a little bit more flavor of what is it that these programs have for these organizations, for these young people. Yeah. And then there were international uh, offers. You go to a project lab, to partner building, etc. And those people would come back, hopefully excited, and then there would be coaching or support leading them up to a application. Yeah. So if we're talking about inclusion and diversity, we should also put um, the money where the, the mouth is, or the uh, yeah. So we should then also uh, follow up on all those things. And in total, there are more than 1,000 uh, new youth workers uh, trained, inclusion workers trained, and more than 70 projects, and that was the 2019 figures, I don't have the latest one, uh, 70 inclusion projects with more than 750 young people with fewer opportunities that came out of there. <laughs> so these all kind of uh, target groups that otherwise we would not reach, yeah, because the NAs really did an effort to go out of the usual suspects. Uh, so that's really a great thing that happened. But talking about strategies, it's not only about hot air, it's not only nice words, as you can see, there's always enough hot air. Um, also very concrete things came out of it that were for the whole youth work sector, so that it's not only um, those few national agencies that were involved, but also the rest of the NAs and the rest of the youth work. How did we do that? Um, we created some practical inclusion and diversity guides. So one is a cookbook for inclusion. So that is for our NA colleagues eh, who have to implement these projects, who have to make sure that there's enough inclusion and diversity. How do we make sure that they have the right recipes yeah, to um, uh, to get those new uh, groups on board. So that's the cookbook. For the um, uh, wider audience, so people who are working with uh, disability or plan to work with disability, we have this uh, Engage in Inclusion that was launched uh, two or three uh, weeks ago in uh, Iceland at the seminar. Um, so how do you do that? Imagine you're a mainstream youth organization and you happen to have a person with uh, a disability that wants to go on your international project. Hui, I don't know how to do that. So this guide actually gives you this, hopefully this yes we can approach. And uh, the next star I want to dedicate to Hanna, who is listening online, uh, because she made this happen uh, from the SPI. So Hanna, woo <laughs> Voila. Oh. But it's 2021. Hmm. Do people still read those books and those publications? Yeah? This little chap, maybe not. And also looking at you, most of you also have something else in the hand than a book. And that's how our first app was born. Yeah? But before we go there, I have to explain a little bit about the context uh, where the app comes from. So there is this European platform on learning mobility. What is that? So you know that many people, many stakeholders are convinced about these international meetings and connections between each other. So they said, let's put our heads together. Yeah? And there is this European platform for learning mobility where uh, people from the Commission come together with people from the Council of Europe, from the Youth Forum, from NGOs, all the exchange organizations, uh, you probably know them, AFS, Youth for Understanding, those kind of things, together with national agencies, to, with, with SALTOS. And the nice thing there is that around the table, there's practitioners, there's the policymakers, but there's also researchers. And I think that in itself is already an achievement. Yay! <laughs> Now, what do those clever people do around these tables? At some stage, they focused on inclusion because, yeah, young people with fewer opportunities, uh, you probably know uh, as good as me or better than me, they don't always find their way into these lovely projects, to these opportunities. So there was a big focus on inclusion. And one thing is to get the young people in. The next thing is like, okay, how do we make this experience as good as possible? So they focused on quality. That was something what all the people around the table had in common. How can we make our projects, if we do a project anyway, 
as good as possible so that there's as much impact as possible. So together with the researchers and um, uh, consultations, then they came to 22 quality principles. Great. So it's like a quality charter. These are the things you need to do to have really a good uh, international project, youth project. But then the principles are not enough. What are the indicators? How can we measure? What's the thermometer to put in a project to see a little bit like, is it a good one or a very good one, etc. And then also all kind of tips and tricks like how to up your indicator, your thermometer, how to make it really a good project. And then we said, Okay, let's gamify that. Yeah? So we made this quality mobility app, Q app for the friends. Yeah? Um, and some of the people who were involved in it are again here in the audience, like Susie, etc. So we actually turned all the resources that were around in this uh, app. The rate queue, so you can rate any project you did according to the European quality principles. Yeah? The principles that those people around the table said, like, this is what a good project should be. So that's great. But one step further, if you want to create a project, collaboratively write with your partners, you can go to Create Queue and really start uh, writing together um, like all the things you need for an application form. At the end, you click Download, and you can copy and paste in your application to Solidarity Core, to um, the Erasmus+, Plus, but also the, um, the Youth Foundation or the Germofranco uh, Youth Exchanges, all the things that are around, because they all ask more or less the same things. And the nice thing is that in the search queue, you have all the resources to make your project better, to make it more inclusive. So you can just swipe them in or you can search through them. And again, this is not only uh, uh, Salto or the Yint um, uh, achievement, this is an achievement also of all the partners involved, because many partners are, were involved. And the national agencies actually translated this into, for the moment, 12 languages and more languages coming. So I think. Yay! Thank you to our national agency colleagues uh, for uh, making it available again in different languages because that takes away more obstacles as well. Okay, we were going a little bit down the digital road, uh, but we did more. Also our publications, instead of printing them and then only being able to give uh, 500 people in Europe a, a copy, we just made them digital. We went native, like our colleague Enrique, where's Enrique? He's probably busy organizing. Ah, he's down there in the end, in the back of the room. Um, so we made this publication on how to make sure that inclusion, t inclusion and diversity works in digital youth work, yeah? with all the online things that were happening, how to do that. And the nice thing about a digital publication is that uh, you can just add things. So there's articles, there's uh, podcasts, there's videos. And if there's good practices, we can just add them. So it's an evolutionary, I'm looking at native speakers. Uh, so it's a thing that grows. And I think that's great. Yay. <laughs> Okay, another example, for example, embracing diversity. Huh? So we don't only work on inclusion, getting all kind of target groups in, but once they're in, also we need to know how to manage this diversity of all the different groups, etc. how to make it a great experience for all. So we um, had a few training courses on that, and uh, based on that, uh, Maria turned this into a uh, publication, which is an online uh, publication as well, a PDF, which also works with all the links and all the embedded uh, kind of files. You can still download and print it if you want. I mean, there's different generations available here in the room, uh, one being on stage as well. Uh, so anyway, nowadays people are a bit more visual, so we also turned the essence of what is it actually we are talking about into a little YouTube animated video. So that's for your young people, maybe. Yay! Great. And then latest trends, as you can see, even the cows are uh, with it. There are nowadays podcasts. Okay, um, so not everybody just reads to get new information. Sometimes people just listen to get new information, new knowledge, etc. So we have uh, two podcast series, or maybe more, I forgot, probably a, a few, but one is Shaping Inclusion. That is, how do you make your inclusion strategy if you have a big organization and you want to uh, do it in a bit more strategic way? 
Um, there's, I think, uh, six, six episodes uh, on how to do that, different interviews, tips and tricks, uh, uh, talks with, uh, with trainers, people who have done it before, with the commission, etc. And then the second one is the inclusion and diversity kitchen. This is about involving other people in the kitchen. So it shouldn't be only the chef, but there's lots of other people that you need as well uh, to make it happen. Yeah. And the nice thing is that you can then upskill yourselves while you're on the train, while you're doing the dishes, while you're ironing, if you still do that. Uh, I don't. And I think that's a great thing. Yay! <laughs> voilà. Oh no. And then Corona came. Damn. We already started with baby steps um, in our digital transformation, as it's nicely called. But then all of a sudden, digital transformation had to go 100 miles an hour uh, faster. OK. And we tried to do our best. So this ID forum was supposed to happen last year to put ID really on the map, like we're doing now. But last year, oi, no more map, no more people that could travel across the map. So what could we do to really still have inclusion and diversity out there so that people are kept warm for this vibe of inclusion and diversity? And instead of TED Talks, we just did ID Talks. Just a one hour speaker, inspirational speaker, uh, talking about one of those uh, many inclusion related topics, whether it's about how do you have impact, how do you talk about, my, or how do you work on migration, class, gender, um, intersectionality, all kind of things. And the nice thing is, we didn't only have that for the 20, 30 people that uh, participated, or up to 70 people. Um, actually, we also recorded it, so you can still have it online, and we asked the speakers to write a little article about it. So all of that is still available online. Yay! Good. And then zooming out a little bit, um, we already heard from Sophia this morning that also the framework is important, that the right conditions are created, right conditions who hopefully are adapted enough to different um, uh, needs in different countries, let's say. Yeah. So how did we do that? Um, Sophia and Kuhn already mentioned it. There were inclusion and diversity, or inclusion strategies since 2003. The only thing in the first inclusion and diversity strategy, we want to make it non-exclusive. So we didn't want to nail down, okay, we only work on disability, oh, and maybe homeless and that. So we really kept it open. So that's why we got the comment from the, the auditors at that time. We need to have a definition, otherwise you can fund anything and everything. You know? And that's where, indeed, the definition of young people with fewer opportunities come from. Yeah? So if that is a tongue breaker for you, sorry, that's our fault. I mean, the people who were involved at that time, it is a long thing, but it's really important not to label people. Yeah? It's the fewer opportunities that are important and not the disadvantage, stamp young people. Yeah? And also, when we then uh, defined why could people be with fewer opportunities, we had those exclusion criteria. And Carlo already mentioned some of them, uh, like if you're from a disadvantaged neighborhood, if you have uh, educational uh, issues, if you have disability, health issues, etc. So all those things. When we gave the examples, we on purpose put the three dots at the end, so that if we for would forget something, it's always possible to add. Like, for example, recently, mental health is certainly some uh, one that we have to add there. You know? um, in 2014, when the, the previous new program was launched, so the, the old program by now, um, we also said, OK, it's nice to have this strategy, but if there's nobody in the driving seat, how are we going to make sure that things are happening? Yeah? And that's when the Commission took the initiative um, uh, to create this ID steering group for youth. So there is a steering group uh, with national agencies. Sometimes we also invite NGO experts to see how is it going and what are the difficulties and what could we still tweak. Yeah, for example, what could be exceptional costs? NAs were sometimes a bit puzzled, like do we grant that or not? So we uh, made an inventory of all the things that different NAs uh, do. So to, to know better from each other, okay, that is okay to grant. Yeah? Or, for example, the assessor's guide. So when you do your projects, assessors have to read it. So there's a guide for them. 
and it was not very inclusive-minded or inclusion-minded. So we made sure that there was more focus on inclusion. So those are little things that, yeah, it's important that someone cares about that. So uh, we had this inclusion and diversity steering group um, for that. Another thing that happened in the meantime is that uh, there used to be a salto on cultural diversity and a salto on inclusion. But since now the strategy is on inclusion and diversity, the only logical thing would be to also merge them. And we merged those two together then, I think it was three years ago, four years ago, in um, the Salto in the Flemish National Agency. Um, so the Salto is organizing uh, this event. And also, thank you to the Commission, they said, OK, this is a very important thing. So they also um, gave us more funds so that we could also increase the staff from two people. Uh, in the beginning, it was only half a person, then we went to two, and now we are four people. And I would like to point out the colleagues which are there, Maria, Enrique used to be there in the back. Yeah, Enrique is there. Peter Jan, where's Peter Jan? Voila, Peter Jan there. Uh, they're all busy, so um, great to have my colleagues there. And then why did I choose this cartoon? It's a little bit what uh, Sophia already said. Um, the clown is the non-formal education, the little youth uh, part. But what is following is the other sectors. And that is nice that we... Um, now have not only the inclusion diversity strategy only for the youth field, but it's actually been enlarged to the whole Erasmus Plus. So also the universities, the vocational training, the uh, adult education, etc. Um, the thing is, they also took almost literally the definition that we came up with a few years ago, so that is great. Also, many of the actions that we should be doing um, are still in there. But more about that tomorrow. Um, uh, Marta from the Commission will be um, presenting what is now in this new uh, inclusion uh, and diversity strategy. And as Sophia already said, there will be a salt to inclusion and diversity for the education and training sector as well. So somehow we did something right. <laughs> Yay! Good. And I come to my last slide, sorry for talking too much. The main achievement of all is ID Forum. Yay! <laughs> Why? Because, yeah, try to organize something in COVID times. Yeah, it's like putting a cat in a box. I don't know if you have cats. I have three at home and a husband. But anyway, to put them in a box, very difficult. So first, we were supposed to have this one in June 2020, I think. Then we sort of um, almost, yeah, what to do? We put it hybrid, then we cancelled, then we, in the end, we almost gave up. And now it happened. So thank you for the team. And that's another star, I think, to make it happen. Yeah, despite all these last minute changes, all the complications, etc. And then I have a last star, and that is basically for you for making it here and being together with us. So, uh, yay! So, I hope that there's lots of achievements and that we can celebrate them together. So, thank you for that. Uh, no? Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you for that uh, roadmap of achievements. Uh, going back through what has been happening in the last two decades. Uh, it's very inspiring and I think that especially for all of us sitting here or standing here in this room for our online group uh, and everybody out there who is following this live stream now who has been working in the field, I think it has really impacted our work um, and yeah, and our lives. So I think thank you to everyone who has contributed to, to that very rich story and, and all those achievements.